Good evening. This is the Oscar expert here with brother. I mean, <laughs> this is the Oscar expert here with Sissy Sis. Sis. We're going to talk about all the movies that I didn't talk about that I have seen. I reviewed most of my favorites and the ones that are most high in demand. So you, if you're wondering, hey, where are the seven out of tens? Where are the six out of tens? Here they are. Here they are. He recommended most to me. What are we? Gonna, how are we going to have sex? <laughs> That's not what it's called. <laughs> How to have sex. Cole is a Virgo moon and Cole is a Leo sun. And Don't call me a Virgo. Our rising signs are compatible. I'm Ooh. just letting you go. You know a fun fact is that Cole plays drums and I play drums too. I'm in a band called Madame Daily. You can find us on all platforms and we play live in New York City. Come see the show. You know <laughs> what I mean? Support all female musicians. You support enough males. Or just support You're women. Enough. Don't watch this video. I'm <laughs> profiting from it. So you not are supporting enough. an okay cause. It's an okay Cause. They're, it's okay. There are better causes, yeah, but yeah, it's better. an okay. A lot better. No Love Lost, which I actually gave an 8 out of 10. It was the only movie I saw in the Critics Week lineup. The lead actor was actually the actor in 120 Beats Per Minute, which I didn't know, but he was great. It's a very energetic and soulful indie film that has really good writing. It was very funny, and the end got to me. There was just a great last shot in this movie. Wonderful performances. Would very much recommend No Love Lost. Next movie is Last Summer. <laughs> <laughs> it's about a MILF who fucks her 17 year old stepson. And it was actually pretty good. A lot of people are very hostile towards this movie because maybe they expected it to finger wag more, but. If it was a man, if it was a dilf and a daughter, <laughs> it would not be a movie. That's what people are gonna say, right? I think some people got confused because they thought that it was sexy, but they were like, I'm not supposed to think that this is sexy. But the movie, you know, later on in the second half, I think it kind of subverts that. I would almost compare it to the way that in The Wolf of Wall Street, it makes it look fun to be an asshole. And then it's like, wow, shit, this is kind of dark. I think it's a little bit like that. And I actually like the way that this was done. Very, very good performances, especially from the lead actress in this one. The Pot A Few, my French isn't very good. This movie won Best Director, which is actually pretty understandable because it was a very well-made movie, very good cinematography, very expressive lighting, especially like the final shot. There were some really great moments. This movie is food porn. I have never wanted delicious food more in a movie. The opening scene is like 25 minutes long of this guy cooking with his sort of wife. And it's actually pretty beautiful how this movie illustrates the relationship between, you know, someone's passion with their food and like the shared passion that they have. And it tells a love story. I don't know why I wasn't like crazy about the movie. Some people think it's a masterpiece, but I thought it was, you know, I thought it was good. Four Daughters, which was a documentary about a woman who has four daughters and two of them joined ISIS. Uh, <laughs> oh. Now you regret putting the four fingers up, don't you? It was very well shot, actually. It was very well filmed. I don't know if the documentary went like above and beyond to me, but there were some really strong moments in it. I would, I would uh, say it's good. I liked it. Which character gave the strongest performance? It's a documentary. <laughs> Bye! <laughs> My All sister right. says, I'm sure you were a hit. Hit me. I like to be a hit. Can't wink at, you winked at the camera, but you're over there. Well, now they, now they know. The Animal Kingdom was sort of a sci-fi movie about people who are slowly turning into animals. The movie took the stakes very real and it created a world that was like, hey, if this was happening, this is kind of like accurate as to how it would be. And so it was pretty engrossing, but I would say this movie was definitely too long at two hours and 10 minutes. I was feeling the runtime, especially the entire epilogue. It ended at a really good moment and I was like, well, ready to get up and uh, do a little clap, but then it went on for like another six minutes. Adela Exarchopoulos is wasted in this movie. Not that she like got drunk in the movie, that, that could have been a little more fun. I didn't find it to be too exceptional, but the concept was pretty original and kept it going. Although I would say it felt like one of the more standard ways that this concept could play out. It didn't like take its creativity and just like keep adding to it, I guess. The Old Oak was the new movie from Ken Loach. Ken Loach is definitely expressing his grievances towards Islamophobia in the wake of refugees coming to Europe. You know, this is one of those movies that it's like, if you're not racist, it's not going to be challenging it to you. You know, it's just, it's not that challenging of a movie. It's a little generic, just very light, trying to be like breezy and heartfelt. It definitely has solid character development and very good performances. It has a good message about community. But yeah, it was like a little like kind of nice, maybe like a little like too nice and conventional and easy. Homecoming was the new film from Catherine Corsini. I liked her last film, La Fracture, a lot when I saw that uh, two can ago. And this filmmaker seems to thrive in getting her characters to like banter. And I thought that the 
the dialogue and the bantering felt really natural and that's what I really liked about it. It's kind of a dual coming of age story of like these two girls. Them and the mother are excellent. I didn't think it went like above and beyond as a coming of age movie, but I thought it was pretty solid. Black Flies stars Sean Penn and Ty Sheridan. This is basically like whiplash for EMTs. It's like a psychological drama thriller that's trying to get you into the headspace of like this paramedic who is just trying to do his best trying to save people in a world that feels like it's just beating down on him and the movie has these flashing police sirens like all over the screen a lot of the time and it's very chaotic. I mean, I think it's very effective in terms of the editing and the sound design at getting you in this character's head. The direction I think is strong in that sense. A lot of people found this to be way too much, way too overwhelming, and a lot of people found it to be very cynical and I do get that. It's kind of non-stop. It would have been nice if there were some moments of levity. There are some side characters that are a little bit wasted. Sean Penn and Ty Sheridan are both very good. You know, overall, even though critics kind of slammed this one, I did like it because I thought it was successful at putting you in this character's headspace, and I didn't think it was boring, but I do think it is far too repetitive. Fallen Leaves was the new movie from Aki Kurismaki. This was my first Kurismaki film. It seems like, you know, he's got his thing that he does with this deadpan humor and the style of his actors, the style of his sets, his cinematography, and the colors that he uses, very distinct, which I appreciated. Really feels like a director operating in his own league. You know, although I did think this one had its moments that were sweet, and I thought some of the dry humor was tasteful and funny, I didn't think that, like, what it was going for was all that surprising to me after watching the movie for maybe, like, 25 minutes. I felt like, okay, I understand. It's this kind of dull world with people working, like, these middle or lower class jobs, and then they get these brief moments that are like very nice and romantic. Like I kind of get that and it just does that again and again. So I wasn't as impressed as other people. This movie did win the third place prize for the jury. I did think it was worth checking out one of this director's movies, Firebrand with Alicia Vikander and Jude Law. I thought the costumes were nuts in this movie, especially the male costumes. There's like so many layers to them. That kind of blew me away. The story was fine. It kind of like tells you what it's about or like what the theme is and before the movie and like this text and right after the movie it kind of reiterates that to you as if you can't really decide for your own what the movie's about there's just not really much to like chew on here it's kind of straightforward you know there were parts where I was like sort of gripped I thought Alicia Vikander was decent Jude Law is quite good though but his character gets exhausted by the film when he comes on a screen for the first time he's just like this ferocious beast he's like ah, ah, oh. It's like fucking everything and like eating everything. He's just disgusting. But there's only so much of this character that you really need to see before you've seen it all is what I would say about him. It was all right, it was decent. Club Zero I reviewed on Luke Herefield's channel if you wanna go check that out. And the last movie, possibly the one that people wanted me to review the most that I didn't review is La Chimera. I have to say before Cam started, I did watch Happy as Lazaro. I was very much expecting to like it and I came out like pretty lukewarm on it. So I kind of thought, okay, I might feel the same way about this other movie. Maybe I'm just disconnected from this filmmaker and her style just doesn't work for me. And that was the case. I had a coffee before this movie to make sure that I was like really focusing and paying attention. I wanted to like it and get into it but it just wasn't working for me. I did not get a very strong sense of momentum. The pacing just felt weird, like it wasn't building and the main character just felt stagnant. He was like, I have like a girl who I'm stuck in the past with and I like artifacts from the past. Sometimes the movie does this thing where they'll sing songs that are kind of telling you what the movie is about, which is not a thing I'm a fan of. All the side characters sort of bunch up into like a cluster and they're just kind of like hopping around uh, around the main character who I don't think is that interesting and all the side characters are just blending in. And there's just something about the movies that I'm not that big a fan of. I think they're beautifully shot. I love the cinematography in her films. There are aspects of the style that I was a fan of and even some of the quirkier bits like speeding up people in a sort of like silent filmy slapstick way when they're running around. I actually liked those bits. It was just hard for me to get into the characters or the story and it's hard to explain why. It's like a lot of people are telling you that an album is really good and you just don't vibe with it and you just don't see what other people are seeing in it. Although I have my criticisms with the movie because I've watched two of her films and felt the same way, this is probably just a case of me not vibing with this director for whatever reason. And those are all the movies that I saw that I didn't talk about. I can. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. What have you not seen?